When we talk about ancient civilizations, there's one genetic mystery that absolutely blew scientists' minds when they finally cracked it. And it's all about the Minoans and Mycenaeans. You know those legendary ancient Greeks who built massive palaces and might have inspired the whole Atlantis story. Now get this. For literally centuries, people were arguing themselves blue in the face about where these fascinating people actually came from. And what's absolutely wild is that some researchers were dead certain they must have sailed in from ancient Egypt or the Middle East, because how else could they have been so advanced? But hold on to your seats, because when geneticists finally got their hands on some ancient DNA from these civilizations, they found something that would make your jaw drop. Turns out that both the Minoans and Mycenaeans were actually carrying some seriously mind-blowing genetic signatures. Now here's where it gets crazy. When scientists looked at their mitochondrial DNA, which is like a genetic time capsule passed down from mother to child, they found that these ancient people were rocking some very specific haplogroups, particularly H, K and T which are basically genetic breadcrumbs leading straight back to the first farmers who settled in Europe. But wait, because there's an even wilder plot twist when we look at their Y-chromosome DNA, which is passed down from father to son. The ancient Greeks were mainly carrying haplogroups J2A and G2A, which is absolutely fascinating, because these genetic signatures tell us they had some serious genetic input from early farmers who moved in from Anatolia. And if you think that's wild, wait until you hear about what genome-wide analysis revealed, because this is where things get really interesting. Scientists found that both civilizations shared about 75% of their DNA with ancient European farmers who were already living in Greece thousands of years before anyone even thought about building those fancy palaces. But here's the absolute kicker. The remaining 25% of their DNA came from people who originated somewhere in the ancient Caucasus region, which is basically modern-day Armenia and Iran. And what's particularly mind-blowing is that the Mycenaeans had an extra splash of genetic heritage that the Minoans didn't have a small but significant chunk of DNA from the Eurasian steppes, which suggests that some mysterious population moved in and mixed with the local folks right around the time Mycenaean culture was taking off. Now, here's where things get even crazier. When scientists compared this ancient DNA to modern Greeks, they found something absolutely stunning. Turns out that modern Greeks still carry the genetic signatures of these ancient civilizations with about 80% genetic similarity to the Mycenaeans. And what's wild is that this basically proves that despite all the empires and invasions and population movements that have swept through Greece over the last 4,000 years, the core genetic heritage of these ancient people has survived almost intact. But perhaps the most fascinating part of all this is what it tells us about how civilization actually develops. Because this genetic evidence shows us that you don't need some advanced civilization to sweep in and show everyone how it's done. The Minoans and Mycenaeans basically developed their incredible cultures right there at home, mixing local traditions with ideas and innovations that spread through trade rather than invasion. So next time someone tries to tell you that ancient Greek civilization must have been imported from somewhere else, you can hit them with the genetic facts that prove these legendary cultures were actually homegrown, combining the DNA of early European farmers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and in the case of the Mycenaeans, a splash of steppe ancestry to create something entirely new and absolutely revolutionary in human history. When it comes to genetic mysteries, there's one that's been driving people absolutely crazy for centuries, and it's all about whether modern Greeks are actually related to those legendary ancient Greeks who gave us democracy, philosophy, and some seriously impressive architecture. Now get this. For years, people were throwing around all sorts of wild theories 
with some claiming modern Greeks were completely different from their ancient ancestors and others, insisting they were exactly the same. But here's where things get absolutely fascinating, because modern genetic science just dropped a bombshell that would make your jaw drop. When scientists started looking at the DNA evidence, they found something that was absolutely mind-blowing. Turns out that modern Greeks are carrying genetic signatures that trace directly back to the Bronze Age, which is basically like having a 4,000-year-old family tree. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When researchers looked at Y-chromosome haplogroups, which is the genetic story passed down from father to son, they found that modern Greeks are rocking some seriously ancient lineages. We're talking about haplogroup EV13, which shows up in about 30% of Greek men and literally connects them straight back to their ancient ancestors. But wait, because there's an even wilder plot twist when we look at mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mother to child. Scientists found that modern Greeks are carrying mtDNA haplogroups like HJT and K, which are exactly the same ones found in ancient Greek remains. And what's particularly crazy is that these genetic signatures show up in almost the same frequencies as they did thousands of years ago. And if you think that's wild, wait until you hear what genome-wide studies revealed, because this is where things get really crazy. Turns out that modern Greeks share about 80% of their DNA with their Mycenaean ancestors, which is absolutely wild when you consider how many different populations have moved through Greece over the centuries. But here's the absolute kicker. While modern Greeks have picked up some additional genetic influences over time, particularly during the Roman, Byzantine and Ottoman periods, the core of their genetic heritage has remained remarkably stable. And what's particularly mind-blowing is that scientists can actually track these smaller genetic additions like they're reading chapters in a history book. For example, they can see subtle genetic influences from ancient Slavic populations that moved into Greece during the medieval period. But here's the crazy part. These additions only make up a small percentage of modern Greek DNA. And perhaps the wildest part of all this is what it tells us about human populations in general. Because this research shows that even when empires rise and fall, when new peoples move in and out, when languages and cultures change, some genetic signatures can remain incredibly stable over thousands of years. So next time someone tries to tell you that modern Greeks aren't connected to their ancient ancestors, you can hit them with the scientific evidence that proves they're carrying DNA that's been passed down through countless generations, reaching all the way back to the people who invented democracy, built the Parthenon, and wrote the stories of gods and heroes that we still tell today. When you dive into Greek genetic history, there's one story that's absolutely wild, and it's all about what happened after the glory days of ancient Greece were over. Now get this, for centuries people have been arguing about just how much all these different groups who moved into Greece actually changed the genetic makeup of the population. And what's mind-blowing is that when scientists finally got their hands on some serious genetic evidence, they found something that would make your jaw drop. Turns out that while Greeks definitely got some new genetic additions over time, the changes weren't nearly as dramatic as some people thought. Now here's where things get really interesting. When researchers started looking at genetic markers from the Slavic migrations, which happened around 1500 years ago, they found something absolutely fascinating. While they could definitely spot Slavic genetic signatures, particularly in northern Greece, what's wild is that these influences only make up about 10 to 15 percent of the modern Greek genetic picture. And if you think that's crazy, wait until you hear about what happened with DNA from Anatolia, because this is where things get really wild. When scientists looked at genetic markers associated with Anatolian populations, they found this absolutely mind-blowing pattern where the genetic influence gets stronger as you move towards the eastern Greek islands and coastal regions, which makes perfect sense when you think about ancient trading routes. 
But here's the absolute kicker. When researchers started looking at Y-chromosome haplogroups, they found something that would blow your mind. While they could see clear evidence of new lineages being added over time, particularly haplogroup I2, which is associated with Slavic populations, and J2, which has strong connections to Anatolia. The original Greek genetic signatures remained incredibly strong. And what's particularly fascinating is that these genetic additions didn't happen all at once, like some massive invasion, but instead show a pattern of gradual mixing over hundreds or even thousands of years. Now, if you think that's wild, wait until you hear what mitochondrial DNA analysis revealed, because this is where things get even crazier. Scientists found that while new mtDNA lineages were definitely added to the Greek genetic mix, the frequency of ancient Greek maternal lineages remained surprisingly stable, which suggests that a lot of these population movements might have involved more men than women. Also, regions that were more isolated, like some of the Greek islands, show much less genetic influence from later migrations, while areas that were major trading hubs show more diverse genetic signatures. So, next time someone tries to tell you that modern Greeks are completely different from their ancient ancestors because of all these migrations, you can hit them with the genetic facts that show, while Greeks definitely picked up some new genetic flavors over the centuries, the core recipe stayed remarkably the same. When we dive into ancient Greek mysteries, there's one that's been driving scientists absolutely crazy, and it's all about trying to figure out how the Greek language actually showed up in Greece in the first place. Now get this. While genetic studies have helped us figure out who the ancient Greeks were, they've opened up an even wilder mystery about how these people started speaking Greek in the first place. And what's absolutely mind-blowing is that this isn't just about Greece, it's about solving one of the biggest puzzles in human history, how a massive family of languages spread across most of Europe and parts of Asia. Turns out there's genetic signatures that shows up in Bronze Age Greek remains that point straight back to the steppes of Eastern Europe, which is exactly where linguists think Indo-European languages came from. But wait, because here's where things get absolutely wild. While we can see this steppe DNA showing up in ancient Greek remains, what's driving researchers crazy is that they can't figure out exactly how this connects to the arrival of the Greek language. And if you think that's complicated, hold on to your seats, because here's where things get even crazier. When scientists started looking at the timing of these genetic changes, they found something fascinating. This steppe ancestry starts showing up in Greek DNA around 2200 BC, which is just about when archaeologists think Proto-Greek might have first been spoken in the region. But here's the absolute kicker. While we can track these genetic signatures, we can't actually prove that these were the people who brought the language. Because here's the wild thing about languages. They don't always spread through massive migrations. Sometimes they can spread through trade, or because the people speaking them are seen as powerful or prestigious, which means you can end up with people speaking a language without having much genetic connection to the original speakers. And what's particularly mind-blowing is that when researchers look at modern Greek populations, they can still see these ancient steppe genetic signatures, but they have absolutely no way to prove whether these were the people who actually brought the Greek language, or if they just happened to move into the area around the same time. But perhaps the craziest part of this whole mystery is what it tells us about how languages and genes interact. Because while genetic evidence can tell us about ancient population movements, it can't tell us what languages these people were speaking or how they convinced others to speak their language. And what's particularly fascinating is that this mystery might never be completely solved because we're trying to understand something that happened over 4,000 years ago without any written records from that time. So next time someone tells you they've figured out exactly how Greek came to Greece, you might want to remind them 
that this remains one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in human history, a puzzle that combines genetics, linguistics, and archaeology in ways that continue to challenge our understanding of how ancient cultures spread and changed. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.